Good afternoon, and welcome to another Moment with Madison. After my rather dismal performance in the Orange County Militia, I turned my attention to politics. I was elected to be a delegate to the Virginia State Constitutional Convention in May of 1776. We declared independence from Britain and wrote a new state constitution. This is where I made my first major political impact by converting George Mason's tolerance for all religions into acceptance thereof. I was elected to the Virginia House of Delegates directly afterwards, where I served for one year, proving my value in brokering compromise and getting things accomplished. Both Governor Henry and the entire legislature was delighted to have a young man of brilliance and energy who could make the paperwork work. <laughs> News of the legislature was one of the most famous men of the age, Thomas Jefferson, soon to be my best friend. The following year, I declined to provide liquid refreshment to the electorate, a common practice of the day. I thought I was being noble and high-minded. They thought I was being cheap, and they elected the tavern owner instead. However, the legislature wanted me back. So they assigned me to Patrick Henry's Governor's Council. Henry was overjoyed to see me again and assigned me a huge amount of his paperwork to do for him. I did it and I did it well. In December of 1779, I was appointed by the state legislature to serve in Continental Congress. I served diligently for three years and was highly respected. In spring of 1784, I was 33 years old. Here I am at 32. I received a letter from Patrick Henry. He wanted to know if I would be willing to commit to further services to our country. Yes, I could most certainly commit to further services to our country. As soon as I arrived in Richmond, I contacted him and we went out for coffee. He expressed his concerns that the federal government was on a bad footing. I concurred and expressed all the problems that we had had with our finances, the suffering of our soldiers, the problems we were having just getting enough money to keep the war going. In 1776, when George Washington was in desperate straits, I had assisted Governor Henry in sending pigs and cattle to the army, so I knew he was sympathetic. In Congress, we had tried numerous times to get all 13 states to agree to some sort of federal taxation to no avail. We begged them for their state contributions, and they didn't even do that. Clearly, the federal government needed the power of taxation. Here, Henry took issue with me. He was worried that too much power was being taken from the states. He warned me to beware the creeping tyrant. That I was a son of old dominion first and must do what was best for Virginia. We were not quite as aligned as I had hoped. This great objective of ours, to meld the 13 states into a single nation, was not his. And this struggle between the powers or rights of the nation of the whole and the rights of the individual states would persist through my lifetime and beyond. Soon after this, Henry, who was now a delegate, proposed an assessment to support religious education. Jefferson and I were aghast. The government should have no involvement in religion whatsoever. But Patrick Henry could sway people. He could talk. The attendance in our religious institutions has fallen dramatically in the past years. What are we if not men of God? We must support our churches. I do not mean to tell anyone which church they should support. Merely that they owe their God just as much as they owe their government. People were mesmerized by his dazzling words, 
And he would clearly succeed in getting this assessment passed if he continued to speak so strongly for it in the House of Delegates. It was at this time that I wrote one of my few protest pamphlets, Memorial and Remonstrance Against the General Assessment. Men of intelligence and quality thought it to be a brilliant piece, but it was not going to be enough to stem the tide of Patrick Henry. Thomas Jefferson and I could only think of one thing to do. We supported the re-election to the governorship. The governor, of course, cannot participate in House debates, and his proposal for an assessment faded away. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a great pleasure. I look forward to seeing you again in another moment with Madison.